the goal of my laboratory has been to try to understand metabolic disease and the window through which we approach metabolic disease including diabetes and cardiovascular diseases through using pluripotent stem cells and like much of the field what we've been busy doing is collecting people with disease phenotypes and making induced pluripotent stem cells uh, from them so that we might try to model those diseases using these cells in a dish the problem that's sort of presented itself over the past few years is what do you use as a control? What is the appropriate cell or person that would say control for cardiovascular disease? And so what most people have been doing over these several years is sort of picking out people that don't have an obvious disease phenotype and making iPS cells from them and then using those to say these are the non-disease cells as compared to the disease cells. What we've found is that there's so much variability between all types of iPS cell lines, whether it be due to genetics or epigenetics, that this variation between pluripotent cells often masks the phenotype. Uh, a good example of that is recently we've been trying to study the role of lipids in myocardial infarction or heart attack. Uh, LDL cholesterol, the bad cholesterol as people call it, is very directly linked to your risk for heart attack. And we knew about a gene that actually impacted LDL cholesterol levels uh, that the liver makes. So we thought let's make stem cells and differentiate them into liver cells and just investigate the background level of LDL cholesterol uh, secretion we were shocked to find that just between two or three different human embryonic stem cells that are verified in their pluripotency and we knew could differentiate quite well to liver cells, we had over a two-fold difference in the amount of LDL cholesterol that they were secreting into the media. So that already told us that there, that variation might mask what could be real significant differences in terms of disease phenotypes in the cells because that type of two-fold change over the course of someone's life could mean about a 50 percent change in your heart attack risk. So the way we went about doing this uh, to try to control or to try to improve this an entire idea of doing disease modeling in a dish is there's sort of two approaches. One is, well, you could just get thousands and thousands of cells and then this variation starts to slowly shrink until it's something that you, don't, you can't measure or you at least have an effect size that's over what is the difference between cells or di differences between people. But since the technology for using uh, pluripotent cells hasn't advanced to the level that you can do in a high throughput way, thousands of differentiations to compare all of them, we decided to take the other approach that scientists often use, which would be to try to compare identical twins. So as a concept, if you could have two identical twin people, but one had a disease, you actually have probably the best built-in control. They're genetically identical. If they were brought up in the same household, et cetera, they've got the same environmental impacts. So we chose to try to do exactly that in terms of disease modeling make identical twin cell lines, one of the identical twins having the disease and the other one not having the disease. And then when you actually look at them, you've taken away as much of the variability as possible. And the way in which we decided to make identical twin cell lines was to use a uh, technology that has recently been developed that's called genome editing using these engineered nucleases. So the engineered nucleases that we chose to use are called tal effector sorry, transcription activator-like effectors that are actually tied to a FOC1 nuclease, and that's short in terms for talon. Well, when we made the mutation in our gene, which was predicted to have some effect in cholesterol, it again had a twofold change, but since we had an identical twin without the mutation as a control, it was very easy to see that. Even when we made the mutation in multiple different cell lines, they all showed the same twofold change as compared to their identical twin. So we feel like the tool gives you the ability to now do a much more precise and rigorous experiment and start to explore biology that might, be, might not be as dramatic as the cells die or the cells stop replicating, but in fact the types of disease-associated uh, genomic risk alleles that we're all carrying that may eventually lead to diabetes or heart disease. So let's say you've already found a cohort of people who have a particular type of Alzheimer's disease and you've asked the uh, HSCI IPS core to make the iPS cells for you. You can also request that those iPS cells be genome engineered to maybe repair a mutation that's causative for the particular disease or in fact introduce the mutation. So you now have sort of a one-stop shop for all the pluripotent cell models in one place, the Harvard stem cell institutes induced pluripotent stem cell core. So this January, I believe, we'll be rolling out a genome editing service that will allow you to knock out genes, knock in reporters, or knock in mutations that you think might be associated with your disease of interest.